Okay, hello. Welcome hello. to the show. And this is our first episode of the Brian Kim show. Well, for now it's called the Brian yeah. Kim show until I get something better. Okay. Uh, but um, the whole point of this podcast is to bring creators in and we're just going to talk about the process and um, and how did they get into this line of work and what inspires them. And uh, hopefully we get to know a little bit more of you. Uh, instead of the the stuff that you put in front, yeah, <laughs> in front of the camera, yeah. yeah, yeah, in front of the camera. So um, before we get started, I uh, just want to read a few things. So if you need dope portraits or O T T, oh wait, O O T Ds. Well, what is that again? O T Ds. Yeah, yeah. Well, what is oh, what is that? O T Ds are basically like off of the day photos. Uh -huh. They need like for most influencers, they're not looking for like high end editorial photos. Right. Well, I mean, some of them do, but okay. sometimes they just need like, hey, like I just need like. 20 photos for my Instagram feed this month, like, can you mm -hmm. help me? Okay, yeah. all right. We're going to learn a lot about that in a, in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe just uh, looking for inspiration for organization and life. Check out uh, Vincent's Instagram at uh, Cathedral? Cytherial. 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 Yeah. Spelled C-Y-T-H-E-R-I-A-L. Yeah. All right. Me. And if you want your fill of me trying to figure out anime and failing to understand every trope and fan service, I got the podcast for you. Uh, watch the anime podcast on this channel, um, and I sit down with our uh, with my amazing co-host Kalani, and we talk about anime. We're in the middle of our second season, and we just premiered season two last week. So if you want to learn how I feel about My Hero Academia, go to the link below on this video and like and subscribe. So, hi, Vincent. Hi. Okay, I want to start off, since you're my first guest on this, I wanted to give you something, just right. a little small token. I wanted to give you Huntington Library tickets, <laughs> but uh, for, my, for my job, they, they ran out. Yeah. But I thought about something else. Give me a second, okay. because I just moved it. <laughs> <laughs> just a little token. Of my appreciation for you coming here. So Ooh, this is this? some fa uh, face wash from Japan. Oh my god! Okay, thank yeah. you. I was actually talking. I was actually meeting. I was with mm -hmm. you know. I was with Kalani and Amanda like mm -hmm. the other day or like two days yesterday. Yeah, yeah. No, two days ago. And we were literally just talking about your trip to Japan. And yeah, you got like all this really dope skincare. Mm -hmm. And I was well. It's just like two things though. Two two things of a lot of things. Two things of a lot of things. Yeah, okay. because I, my my niece at the time she just wanted uh, like these face masks, mm -hmm. and I got three of those. And then this was just a bunch. And there's like a longer story to that, but. Mm -hmm. I just, don't want to talk about it. I can't wait to try this. Yeah. Thank it's you. actually really good. I've, I've tried it yeah. um, with this bottle, but it's not used. Nobody's used it other than me. Just <laughs> That's okay. Time. I don't really mind. Okay. <laughs> but hey, thanks for having me on the uh, the podcast today, man. Yeah. So um, so you've done photography mm -hmm. for how long so far? Um, so I started photography as a hobby back in, I would say, like 2014 in college. Mm -hmm. Um, but as soon as I graduated, I mm. kind of realized, well, I need to do the Asian thing and get a full-time job because yeah. that's what a good Asian boy would do, right? Yeah, right. And, um, no, I was working in, um, I was trying to work in corporate for, I think, three years. Yeah, yeah I remember three, that. Yeah, three yeah. years. Through I, the clothing company, right? I yeah, do I remember that. Oh, my gosh. So I had, like... 10 different jobs throughout mm -hmm. the course of graduating up until doing photography and it was such a hot mess like mm -hmm. i jumped from job to job i think almost every three months mm -hmm. and thinking i was like oh i'm moving up the corporate ladder whatever just like mm -hmm. you know and it was just not working out and right. um so i stopped so um after i got laid off from my last job mm -hmm. i was looking for work for about i think three or four months and it just did not work out and then right. at this in this whole three-year period i basically mm -hmm. didn't touch my camera right for like the whole time because i was just so focused on getting my career started that i was mm -hmm. like i just don't have time for this so i guess for me being a serious photographer and actually taking my craft like seriously i think right. it's been like a year a year like, a little over a year yeah because yeah. if you think about it like Three year a three year hiatus from photography, you're basically back at square one again. Exactly, yeah. For with, with anything you do, exactly. I feel, yeah. And um, well, what did you graduate with, like um, when you went to college? Oh, uh, let's take out a piece of paper for this. I majored in art history, art administ history. administration studies, which mm -hmm. is a marketing minor, mm -hmm. and then I also did photography mm -hmm. under the whole umbrella of like. Um, 
fine arts. Fine arts. Yeah. Okay. So it's weird. Like I didn't think I would be able to do all three when of I graduated. Those things. Yeah. yeah. It was like you picked a bitch, pick one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then now it's like I'm a photographer, and it's like mm-hmm. holy crap! Like I actually get to use like all, all my, the stuff everything that I you learned. learned. Exactly, and it just yeah. be, it just worked out so perfectly for me. And ha- have the reception of like your photography stuff has been positive with family because when, when and uh, surprise surprise he's Asian yeah <laughs> surprise surprise, surprise. <laughs> if, if, actually... you, if you ever wondered <laughs> while we were talking yes he's Asian so um, <laughs> and um, um, had had your parents uh, took took it seriously or had was there any drama when it comes to that because when you know as we're growing up we all you know that whole stereotype of like becoming a doctor, becoming a lawyer, becoming um, these sort of set expectations from family was always kind of like a thing growing up. Um, and I know it's like been a thing because I work with a lot of like students and I work with a lot of like uh, parents. So um, has that been an issue like with family where they were supported from the get go or did it take time for them to understand? Oh, OK, we, we, we understand now. You know, I don't think it's so much as like, hey, like I don't support what you're doing. It's more of like okay, how are you going to provide for yourself with this? It's more, it wasn't so much just like, mm-hmm. hey, like, I don't want you doing this because we don't want you in the arts. It's more just like, hey, like, mm-hmm. how are you going to support yourself? Like, right. is, this, is this a viable career? Like, what, like, what can you do with this? Because I think for them, like, they feel like, I mean, mm-hmm. out of all the arts, I think they're more likely to be okay with me being a photographer because it's, like, the most versatile, like, industry. Thing. Yeah. Um... But so far, I think, like, something that's really important I think I need to know is when I had this talk with my mom, she was like, I wasn't, I'm not exactly sure where you're going in life, but if this is what you want to do, like, I think that's good enough for me. Because for her, I feel like most Asian parents, they Mm -hmm. kind of live vicariously through their children and they kind of impose all their, you know, like, their mm -hmm. um, aspirations or dreams. Like, they kind of, like, they sacrifice so much for the kids that they're Mm -hmm. just like, okay, like, now you have to live my dream because I sacrificed so much and it's like for her it's more of like my dream is for you to be able to live out your dream because right. I wasn't given the opportunity to pursue whatever it is I want to do in mm-hmm. life I'm working now so that you have the opportunity to do that like that's right. my American dream mm-hmm. you know and she doesn't I mean obviously like with any like parent like you're gonna want to have your kids succeed right, right. like and I feel like that's the like the problem for her it's like it's not so much again like like, I want you to become a doctor. I'm just like, how are you going to be successful as a photographer? It was, like, more of a concern versus, like, oh, I want you to be these set of expectations. Yeah, and I think also for her, too, like, mm-hmm. she kind of was more okay with it because um, my dad is also an artist. Like, I don't know who he is. Like, he's oh. a you know. Like, oh, he, so, he, so, he ain't so a picture. He ain't a picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> but she did tell me from when they were together, she's like, hey, mm-hmm. like, he was an artist. Like, I mean, I feel like that kind of runs through you, too, so. hmm you just gotta explore that. So, it was inevitable. It was inevitable. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I, I was the, so that's something I, I I never knew about you. It's like your dad. Like I knew you talked about your mom a lot. Yeah. And so I don't know if we're diving too much into some personal stuff, but um. So you're. This is my first time you ever yeah. mentioning about your dad. Yeah. So it, well, what's the story behind that? Um. If you want to share, it's just like a weird, complicated immigration story between the two of them. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm not, I can't really go into too much detail. It's of course, like my of mom's course. privacy, but basically they're not together, and mm-hmm. um, I actually don't know who he is. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's kind of like a weird thing where I'm just like, okay, you know what? This is how it is. That I'm like not... he just exists in the world, and you know, you just go. Funny about enough. Yourself. Okay. Why well, I will tell you is, I didn't know he existed until I was 21. Oh really? My mom told me. <laughs> she told me from like Aaron's I was little. I think it was just like the easiest way to just to tell your kid like, hey, like your dad ain't in the picture. It's more of just like, hey, he died. Okay, like <laughs> let's just bur- like literally bury. It. <laughs> you need to bury that memory. <laughs> yeah, let's just bury this. I shit. just Im- imagine like a Vietnamese like soap opera. It's like your dad is here now. <laughs> yeah, no, I swear, no, that's basically what happened. It's like when I came out to her when I was twenty one. She's like, well, mm-hmm. I got a little secret for you too. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a, a lot of revelations all at once. Yeah, okay. she's just like, hey, like, we all got a little bit of secret time. I might as well mm-hmm. just let the cat out of the bag, too. Okay, before we get out uh, of, of the coming out of um, the that story, uh-huh. um, what would you give advice to someone that is considering 
being in the arts and telling their parents, hey, this is what I want to do. Or like, it doesn't have to be the arts. Or it's like, say, for example, of this situation where a parent worked his whole life, his or her life to make sure the kid does not get into a restaurant business and then he or she wants to get into the business. I heard, I heard about you know that I mean? story, yeah. So, like, what, what sort of advice would you give to uh, another individual that, that wants to pursue something that's not within those, like, Asian expectations or, or stereotypes? Well, I mean, I can't really give advice on, like, how to approach the topic with your parents mm -hmm. because... I am the least tactful person I know, and I mm -hmm. am kind of like a bull in a china shop, and right. I would literally just fuck everything up, so I would not recommend anyone take mm -hmm. my advice when it comes to like how to deal with communication with parents. Mm -hmm. But what I can tell you is, at the end of the day, it is your life, mm -hmm. and you cannot allow other people to control. You can't allow other people's expectations mm -hmm. to control where it is you want to go in life, you know, right. because at the end of the day, like, I'm sorry, your parents are going to hopefully die before you do. And at that point, okay, who the fuck's expectations are going to live up to at that point? You know, like, yeah. your, your parents aren't going to be here. Mm -hmm. So that means you just wasted, like, what, 40 years, 40, 50 years of your life living someone else's dream. And then when they're not in the picture anymore, oh, my God, like, mm -hmm. you're free to do whatever you want. But now you're, like, 50 years old and you're about to retire. Yeah. You know, so something I've heard before on, on a different podcast is that um, it's really depressing if you become good at something you don't like. Yeah. And but then and, again, and it's you, not like there's a job. Mm -hmm. The thing I learned is that there's a job, there's a career and there's also like your calling. Mm -hmm. And I mean, oh, so, so you separate just, all those three. So fun yeah. job, career and then. OK. And like, I don't. At this point in time in my life, I don't necessarily think that it's everyone's calling to, like, do the job that it is that they're, like, they really want to do, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but it, not everyone can or is capable of living the kind of, like, mm -hmm. doing the job that they really truly want to do because right. sometimes there's scarcity, they don't have to skill, like, what, for whatever reason. But, I mean, I would encourage people to do it if they can, I but think, sometimes yeah. you, need, you just... Bro, you just gotta survive. Yeah. You know? I think the best thing I think um, uh, people can say is just like, at least try to do it. Exactly. Try to do it at least... To as a, a hobby. You know, at, you can do it as a hobby. Yeah, as something that you can um, get aspirationally. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Say... And so you can say in li later in life, I was like, I at least did it. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and it got to a point where I said, it was some good job. Mm -hmm. I did a very good job and I'm happy with the result came out of it. Exactly. And yeah. like another interesting thing is too, I was actually at the um, Tuesday Night Cafe. The, oh, was that? Yeah, it just yeah, happened. The premiere. Yeah. yeah, the 21st. I think it's like their 21st um, season, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Like I was like five when they first started. Like that's crazy. I, but, I, I remember the first time I went there. <laughs> oh, really? When was that? It was with a group of UCLA. Um, it, it was interesting because it's a Vietnamese student union led okay. thing and it was called Project Hope and they were doing uh, like trying to get people out of like um, like high schools to experience more things out of the high school. Mm -hmm. So we we experienced Tuesday Night Cafe through them okay. and, and we, we saw performances. At one point I was about to do a performance but I just kind of like oh no I just Aww. I just I just went back out but yeah. um, I was gonna sing and play guitar so that's what I was gonna do but uh but now it's on the uh, what my friend said is of legal age of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. So like yeah. what I'm trying to say about um, Tuesday Cafe is like one um, the volunteers who worked there they mm -hmm. had they talked about how Tuesday Night Cafe is a volunteer run organization. And right. They're doing this after their day job, and I right. feel like for a lot of us creatives, that's kind of like mm -hmm. we have to do it on the, the download or not the download, but like we're we're doing it like on the side or like it's more of a hobby for yeah. us and for them like that's Tuesday at Cafe is a perfect example of that. yeah and that's kind of like how it is to kind of like live as a um, a creative it's just that the idea that you you're taking this extra time on top of what you do for a living to just do and follow that passion I also just finished watching a documentary about somebody that wants to do uh, wants to become a stand-up comedian yeah. and the amount of freaking work you have to put into it is astronomical it's mm -hmm. like now it's like 100% respect for anybody who's wanting to get 
to that level of performance. And A, it's being a, com- a stand-up comedian, it's really fucking hard. It's a lot of work to be funny. Yeah, it's a lot of you work to be funny. You know how much time I spent trolling my Facebook to find <laughs> the perfect memes to post? This shit does not come easy. Yeah. <laughs> it really isn't. And, 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 ima- uh, and on top of that, imagine uh, the stress that you're up there on a mic by yourself. You don't have the safety of you and a guitar or you and a band or you and anything. It's just you and your uh, ability to tell a story. Exactly. So, so that's the thing. It's like that's the um, the uh, the living the creator's lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So um, earlier we did talk about how you know you came out to your mom. So yeah. um, that conversation about you being, uh, uh, we, do you want me to describe it as gay or homosexual? Um, gay. I gay. Guess. Yeah. Okay, I just want to be very. Homosexual is so like academic. It's like you are. I use that ironically. I'm like I'm a homosexual, <laughs> but it's like I'm. I'm gay. I just I just want to be. I, I just want to be <laughs> yeah. very respectful. Yeah, 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 this yeah. being the very first yeah. pro- podcast, but uh, I just want want to know like, how did your family say just y- your mom and like say extended family? How did they take you coming, coming out and being your true self? Um. Well, that's a two part question for me because, okay. so. For me, coming out to my mom, I was, like, fully-ish. As with all decisions in my life, it mm-hmm. was very half-assed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had planned, I had planned to, like, mm-hmm. come out in this grand fashion, like, as any stereotypical gay person would right, be, right? right? I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be disowned, I'm going to have it done at a very fancy restaurant with a nice cocktail thrown in my face. I need the dramatic. You, need the, <laughs> you need the drama. I planned that shit out. I'm like, I'm planning on making this dramatic as fuck, okay? All because right, I'm just right. like, it's just how I roll. Mm-hmm. But no, I came out at a fucking Yoshinoya instead. It's like the most commonplace thing. Yeah, the Yoshinoya on Rosemead. On, on Rosemead? Um, and Lost Tunas. I was like, it just happened. Out oh, of blue. wow. And, um, I mean, I, obviously I didn't get the zone because obviously I'm still getting a lot of content with my mom. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, we just, like, it just happened out of the blue when she was talking about, like, women and, like, how I need to be really careful when choosing, like, a partner in life right. and specifically, like, a female partner in life. Um, and I was like, what if I don't want a girlfriend? And mm-hmm. she was like, that's okay, you can wait. I mean, you're still young, you have to work on your career and stuff and, like, make enough money, like, that. at least you have that down. I'm just like, right. no, what if... What if I want a guy? Yeah. And she was like... And she straight up choked on her rice for a second there, and I was like, oh, fuck, here it comes. And, like, I caught... I was like, I had, like, one of those weird, like, astro projection... Like, kind of like experiences moments. where yeah. I'm just like I literally got out of my body and I bitch slapped myself. I'm just like we had a plan here. It's like why, why you didn't you follow the plan? <laughs> follow the content plan. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic home. Yeah. <laughs> and no, it, it just it just happened. And then um we had a really long talk. Well, not a mm-hmm. long-ish talk, but we just talked about. It. She's like, well, I'm just like really like you you, you didn't see any of the signs. Like I asked for like tea sets when I was a kid. I mm-hmm. like dolls. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well. I figured, like, you just liked it. And I'm like, I'm like, you're just a kid. I'm just like, wow, like, great job, like, not conforming, conforming to gender. Conforming to, like, masculine. Like, yeah, like, the whole... Here's a football, go outside and play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she would prefer me playing with a tea set anyways, because at least I'm inside the house. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's why I don't yeah. go out. Sorry, yeah. at all, period, anymore. It's just, what, childhood trauma? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you know, like, Rapunzel in the, clo- like, in the tower? That's basically us, but we're too poor to own a tower. Yeah. So, we just so have it's Rapunzel in a closet. Yes. <laughs> Literally, in a closet. Yeah, you just don't say that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then that's when she said, okay, by the way, so your dad is... <laughs> that actually was... A little bit after that? Oh, or? man, that was such an afternoon. Okay, so, um, mm-hmm. yeah, we had that talk. I asked her, hey, like... What's up with my dad? Like, you, like the stories are never consistent. She's like, yeah, I kind of am like a really horrible liar. But mm-hmm. same with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, yeah, like it was just an easy lie to tell a kid. But yeah. I mean, you're not dumb. And so she kind of <laughs> just told me the whole thing. Um, on top of that, though, in terms of funniness, I also was like, you know, like in terms of like starting my birth and stuff, it's really cool that you like decide to like name me after Nelson Mandela. And mm-hmm. she was like, who the fuck is Nelson Mandela? And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, and Where that, is this I remember that post. I remember that post. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you ever, or if I ever saw your coming out of post, but I did saw your post about how your name was Nelson. Yeah. So, and then, okay, so and then there was people, this perception. Yeah. I feel like people don't really know this a lot. Okay. I've been using Vincent for like 
three years now. Right, right. Um, my legal name is Nelson, and I changed it to Vincent after mm-hmm. college because I had, like, one of those, like, those, like, at post-college, like, crises where it's, like, right. I need something different, but, mm-hmm. one, I'm too poor to move to, like, SF, and I don't have enough hair to yeah. completely chop it off and like do something <laughs> crazy with it yeah so yeah. i was like what kind of dramatic non-self-destructive thing can i do to myself mm-hmm. that can make my life better and i was like you know what i've always liked going by vincent for some reason i was right. and like it's kind of like i'm creating a new identity for myself right. and let i'm allowing nelson to kind of just stay in the past and just move on from that mm-hmm. but yeah so okay for full stance my like legal name is nelson and if mm-hmm. you want to do all the simpsons like jokes and ha ha whatever i will totally allow you to do that well i kind a, of grew up with it yeah there's, there's a whole comment section oh god oh god <laughs> this is gonna be great um but um but yeah i've only knew you as vincent yeah. so when, when when you came out and just put on a post where you're talking to your mom about like oh uh, you know it's weird that you have the name nelson because you were just kind of in the post pregnancy stupor of like I guess Nelson. <laughs> no, that's not... I wish that was what happened. Was that what happened? I, no. I read it as that. And, okay, so okay. basically what happened was my mom... Okay, I'm a huge child, right? Okay, I was, yeah, yeah. I was massive. Like, I'm mm-hmm. six. I'm six one now. Imagine yeah. how it was when I was a kid, right? My mm-hmm. mom is like this... The tiniest little Asian woman mm-hmm. you can ever meet. And so, obviously, the labor was not fun for her. So, she right. was hyped up on enough anesthetics to probably kill a horse. Yeah. So, like, you know, you've seen those videos, right? Where the kids get off of, like, the wisdom teeth, like, extraction Yeah, and videos. just kind of, like, yeah. They're just saying all that weird shit. Yeah. yeah. I should sue the nurse who asked my mom what the fuck she wanted to name <laughs> me. Because, this obviously, there's this tiny little Asian woman who mm-hmm. is clearly high as fuck. Out of her, yeah. And you're gonna sit there and be like, why do you, why do you want to name your ops, like, your, your, your spawn? Yeah. <laughs> and so my mom was just like, a huge procrastinator as well. We're very similar. Like, yeah, we're, in that proc- sense, we're both yeah. pro- procrastinators and we're both horrible liars. Mm-hmm. And so, she was watching TV and obviously at this point, she still hasn't chosen my name yet. Mm. You know, and so she was watching TV and she saw right. a commercial for fucking Nelson Honda. You know the one that's like on. Oh uh, yeah, TV. like yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, you know what would be really awesome if my son can grow up to be as successful as a man who owns that, <laughs> that, that Nissan dealership, that, 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 that Honda dealership, the Honda dealership. And the worst part is, she's like, I love Hondas because they're so reliable <laughs> and they just last forever. Like you're gonna, I want my son to be durable and successful, so I'm gonna name him Nelson. I'm just like, <laughs> and like when she told me that, I was like. This this is the weirdest conversation you ever had with a <laughs> Not even the conversation. It's like mm-hmm. the weirdest train of thought that I could like imagine that you would name your child. Right. You know? And it's just like, you know what? It just works. I mean, she's weird. I'm mm-hmm. weird. And like, I'll, I'll just live with it at this point. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I, afterwards, I basically changed my name after I graduated. Right. But, um... Yeah, I mean, I still go by Nelson to, like, people who are, like... Like, knew you from, like, very Way back then, but ago. it's, like... When, but it gets weird when you start mixing groups of people together, and it's, like, oil and water. Like, half of them know me as Nelson, and yeah, the other and half... Yeah, and I'm, I'm the other half that knew you as Vincent. Yeah, and the weirdest anything. thing... No, the weirdest yeah. thing is, like, when people start coming up to me, and they're like, oh, hi, Nelson, hi, Vincent, and they look at each other where I both... I respond to both names, and you're just like, which one is it? It's, like, a three-way of com- confusion. Right it's there. basically what it means to be a Gemini when I'm not a Gemini. <laughs> Sorry, oh. I had to continue the Gemini hate train. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, uh, 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 just like Facebook, I am a Leo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I do that every time I see a post about like <laughs> horoscopes because it's just so... I'm just I'm not about that yeah. stuff, so I'm just kind of like... I'll just dig into my heels of like, I'm a Leo. I... <sighs> <laughs> you see me on my posts uh, on yeah. your Facebook. You really like to let everyone know that you're a Leo, which is a really <laughs> is that Leo like a thing? thing? Is that's that a, a thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's okay. Kind of a Leo thing to do. Like it's like, hey, I'm here. You're like a ba- you're basically a Gryffindor on on like drugs. What's up? <laughs> but the, but the thing is, so like I I just like to joke about this stuff because I literally know nothing about the zodiac anyways. Same. Just, same. I know about yeah. three things. I know cancers like me mm-hmm. are we're we're cancers and we're also cancers. <laughs> we're emotional. Um, yeah. Virgos are anal mm-hmm. motherfuckers, and then Leos are self-centered pricks, and mm-hmm. then Geminis are like two-faced hoes, and then two is like being generous because they probably have like twenty, twenty different faces. Yeah. Um. So w- w- when it came to re- <laughs> relationships, <laughs> not oh. about horoscopes. <laughs> uh-huh. Sorry, I just bumped into this with my watch, but um, but w- w- with friends, like, have you had any dramas when it came to friendships when when coming out? Uh, at at twenty one, 
not surprisingly not really i was actually really deep in like mm-hmm. a christian like christian club like right. shout out to the asian american christian fellowship like mm-hmm. they were real like they mm-hmm. like i didn't really have any problems with any of my christian friends about you know like being gay i mean if they did they kept it to themselves right but for the most part, it was like really interesting because one of my my best friend who is was I met him mm-hmm. in WACF. He we ended up living together for mm-hmm. um, two years before we graduated. Right. And then right. one it was weird because we lived on op, like on both sides of me coming out and me being straight. But I'm just like, really, bro? Like you had no idea I was gay. Like we lived together for like a year before. But it's like, I mean, I surround myself, I feel like I surround myself with very oblivious people sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, I just didn't know. Either that, but anyways. So, what was really interesting too is like, he's also Christian. He, he, we had a very honest conversation about me being gay and like how he felt about it. And right. he was like, to be very honest with you, you're probably like the first gay person that I was close to. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know how comfortable I would have been to live with you. If on the offset, you, you if were on the gay. offset, I was I was like, hey, I'm gay, and but mm-hmm. before he knew me he was straight, he was like a little bit more comfortable with it, and then right. afterwards, obviously, I mean, it's not like he was uncomfortable with it. It's just like he was like, well, I've already known you already, and like nothing's really changed about you. It's just like he was worried about his own biases as a straight person mm-hmm. and also as a Christian, because I mean, he like I was literally the first gay person that he's ever been friends with. And, right. like, he's obviously it's not like a myth. He like knows gay people exist but it's like right, right. to actually like be friends with someone that's like a completely different like ball game you know? it's probably in a weird way kind of like empowering in, a, in that sense because yeah. you're you're a person that can shed like a more positive or like a maybe personal view of what uh, someone who's gay is yeah. you know what i mean positive and, and grow- is very very um and well at least know. he knows you right yeah. but like uh, versus Having those preconceived notions from, like, say, a family member, or yeah. maybe what if this church was very conservative? You exactly. know what I mean. So, um, and I'm happy that it, it wasn't as dramatic as you know stereotypically would be, oh, right? Yeah, no, I think that's the thing I was most worried about is like how dramatic it would be. But I'm just like, I'm dramatic too. Like I can handle this. But, it's like, <laughs> but it all came out very disappointingly, like calm. <laughs> I say that very jokingly, though. I'm very glad it didn't. It wasn't any worse than you're like. I'm, I'm ready for a fight. I'm ready for a fight. And it just didn't happen. I'm just like, it just oh, didn't happen. Okay. It. I'm like all worked up now. It's, I want to fight someone. Damn it. <laughs> and that's just why you have the gym. <laughs> You're but gonna I'm run not, it off after I'm that. I'm not aggressive. I don't think I'm aggressive enough at this point to like yeah. release all that like pent up anger. I just want to. I just want to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, just be like okay for all those people that discredit me for being a little bit above me, like you know, yeah. being all fat. It's like yeah. I'm gonna prove to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, that, that thirst trap photos on Instagram. That's that's like the goal right there. <laughs> that's the weird. Th- that's the weird thing about me. It's like whenever I see those photos, like say like you know those Hollister photos or like those things. Ever since I've been following you i've been push notification for fashion stuff oh recently, dope. Okay. which is super weird but i just like was it men's fashion or women's fashion both both okay yeah both um but it's just like i i want to aspire to that i know same. yeah it's just a little weird thing it's like oh i see it and i'm in the gym scrolling i was like i gotta get, get back on that ad machine right now do you know how hard it is to like look fashionable when you're not like a waif it's ridiculous like mm-hmm. i'm i am by no means like like rotund right. i'm just like i just got like chunk here yeah. and there and it's like oh my god it is so hard to make clothes look good on me have i covered i covered I, that's why i'm wearing a bomber right now because yeah. it's like i don't want a fat roll to like escape you know like you know then then i, I just immediately just checked out myself like am, oh. I, am I put together i don't want to underdress i really like your shirt though where, where is it from like yeah. i really like the design and everything i yeah. don't know if you guys can see it but. uh yeah unique low it's uh wait it's, it's unique low really yeah it's, wait did it's, you just get it because i kind of want to copy it myself uh I hope it's still there because you know how Uniqlo is. They just like wrote, like revolve their their They're collections. Fast fashion, yeah, like yeah. The Japanese fast fashion. I would rather buy from Uniqlo than H and M though. Honestly, though, their shirts are so comfortable. I have a yeah. couple of t-shirts by them. It's pricey, but it's like really, really. See, that's the problem now. I'm starting to care. Ever since following you, I'm starting yeah. to care more about how I dress and stuff. And it's kind of annoying for my mom because she always she would love to buy me clothes because it's cheap at Ross and Marshalls and stuff. But there's honestly just nothing wrong with going to Ross. And, and there's nothing there. wrong. It's yeah. just that it's like I want to start like kind of cultivating my own thing now. You know, it's well, like starting to do that. And there, but, but, I feel bad for saying like, oh, you don't really need this. Yeah. And but it's still, like yeah. it's what she picks out though. That's a problem. Because yeah. honestly, I 
get a lot of my stuff from like TJ mm-hmm. Maxx. Well, not TJ Maxx. I go to um, Burlington Coat Factory now. I mean, right. I used to like hate that shit when I was younger. It's like, oh, it's like not cool. But yeah, now it's yeah. like, oh my god, they got like some pretty decent stuff. And it's like, it's honestly how you style it and how what makes you look good and how yeah. it makes you feel versus like the, the label. Because I go to like thrift shops, I go to like Crossroads, I go mm-hmm. to like the, the discount retailers. Because it's mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. Like, I might as well buy cheaper clothes or buy reused clothes and kind of like help the environment out a little bit i guess especially when marie kondo really changed things up and like now there's a bunch you know of what shit really there. sucks so why i'm so mad it's like i wanted to take advantage of like all the sales that are going on because yeah. people are purging their closets but then i was one of the people purging my closet too i'm just yeah. like i don't i can't add to this stuff now i'm just like i just need to just like sit down and just purge everything mm-hmm. and then just let it sit for a while and not buy anything but i'm just like i, I would see like people going these massive like mm-hmm like goodwill halls and i'm just right. like on youtube i'm just like fuck i want to be a part of that yeah um not to discredit my mom i i love that she does that now what's happening is that whenever i'm in town with her yeah we go to more ross and marshall's together so i just pick out what i like and then you know kind of like this then, is why i like yeah this. this is what i like and then um and, and it's her decision if she wants to buy it or not yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes it's like I'm not buying that for you because it doesn't look nice. I was like, yeah. but I like it, so I'm going to use my money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, What else on, on here that I wanted to talk So fashion, we, we did key in on fashion. So yeah. um, was your interest in fashion something that was um, cultivated when you were young or something that you kind of dive more deeper during and post-college? I feel like... Especially... My- your job right out of college yeah so my i feel like my relationship with fashion is there we can do a completely separate podcast on like the idea of like poverty and like how Mm -hmm. it's like the culture of like hey like you want to fit in and stuff like how it goes to fashion but like in the more superficial sense i got into fashion let's say around like 2014 Mm -hmm. around the same time i started doing photography as well right um and I mean, I just saw a gif of Jen M on Tumblr. I was like, wow, she's really pretty. Let me, like, I kind of like want to learn more about her. I'm just like, like, she's so enchanting. Like that, it was mm-hmm. like really pretty. Like she was, re- she's really pretty, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I was on Tumblr. I was like, wow, who, who, who is this person? And so I found her Tumblr or not, not her Tumblr, her YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And then that's kind of like started the whole rabbit hole of like, you know, like fashion. And it's like, the crazy thing is like, the reason why I even got into fashion to begin with was because I saw another Asian person in fashion because up mm-hmm. until then, up, I think... 2014, God, I'm, I don't know, I don't know people know how old I am, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but um, I'm trying to, I, I can't math right now, but um, I, up until that point, mm-hmm. I didn't think fashion was something Asian people could be a part of, mm-hmm. because up until then, I only seen black and white faces in mm-hmm. fashion, even, not even so much black and white faces, like, all white, and then, like, really the only people POC that were in fashion were black and that's it you never you hardly ever see like Asians and so the that's first... the weird thing so when I was in Japan yeah. right for uh in, in January and if you want to see that there's a vlog down there um but uh, on this channel but um I did see some fashion stuff where like you know Hollister H&M and like these these massive brands in California like not in California but in the United States uh-huh. they still had black and white faces and I'm in the middle of Japan where a lot of the, like, a lot of people are just Japanese. Yeah. And I just thought it was weird. It's like, you're trying to market your clothes to the local people here, but you're not having the local people here represented. I heard that's, like, a huge problem in China, too. Like, uh, some of the Asian countries, like, they specifically use white people because it's, like, oh, it's like, like that's, like, the epitome compen- of, like, yeah. but... But it's not even, like, even as an Asian American, it's like, I didn't really see any representation in fashion. That's why I yeah. wasn't interested. Up until I saw Jen M, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh my god, there's an Asian person who's doing, like, content that's relatable to, mm-hmm. like, a young, like, a young-ish audience. Because I was, I think I was, like, 20, 21 at that point. And right. she's only, like, two years older than I am, mm-hmm. you know? And that's when I was like, okay, maybe this is something I can do, or something I can get into. And then I realize you know like i'm into art and then i'm starting like fashion like how do i mix that and then i realized oh my god i can do fashion photography and i mm-hmm. actually like photography like and da, they, da, da, da. yeah and now, like, now we're here <laughs> yeah yeah and we just spent a, a, a whole 30 minutes talking about your personal life but like uh, yeah. so so now that you've talked about photography let's go back into it okay Segway. Oh, Segway. Yeah. So, are we having a commercial break right now? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would if if one day I actually had sponsors. sponsors. Yes. Yeah, so. Sponsor him, please. Yes. <laughs> Someone find him a sponsor. Please. I'll, I'll I'll take it in the form of free clothes and or food. Oh, you want me? You want me an IG influencer? <laughs> anyway, Let's so do it. so um for fashion photography, so 
you primarily do a lot of stuff with fashion and, and um, clothes. Are these clothes things that the models are bringing to the table or is this something that you have on hand or is it like a sponsored deal? Like, wh 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 as of right now, wh wh what's the ratio? So my, my line of work is I mainly do like fashion and portraiture mm -hmm. um, and how I source the clothes. It's mostly the models. It's most because mm -hmm. a lot of them are like influencers or people who are, are on social media and it's right. their job to like have clothes. Mm -hmm. So they have brands selling them stuff anyway. So they hire me to take their photos for them yeah. and it's like a really great job i love working with clients and i don't like as much as like people shit on like influencers and especially ig influencers like mm -hmm. i've never really run into like i haven't really run into like like a stereotypical ig influencer a lot of them are really sweet and like mm -hmm. i love working with them um so they do bring their own clothes but i've had like i think um two or three shoots recently that's like a brand sent me stuff and then i found like a, a blogger or like mm -hmm. whatever one of my friends to like shoot the um the photos with mm -hmm. um and i would put the clothes on them and right. they would model for me mm -hmm. um but that doesn't really happen often and yeah. i'm still not getting paid for this shit but it's fun like it's I, do still, for, I, I do it mainly for fun like the branded collaborations like i should be charging for it but yeah. for me i'm just like free clothes yay i'm still like yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm still in that stage where i'm just like oh my god give me all the free shit yeah <laughs> yeah um just real quick uh we're gonna put a quick pause button because yeah. i think my phone just uh crapped out real quick so okay. um we're just gonna put a quick pause on this situation right now so to to fix some some technical issues so okay. i'll be back in a second all right double checking all right we're good uh sync for audio one two three okay and we're back and we're back yeah <laughs> minor difficulties uh okay sorry i just my weird mind right now i just gotta double check it again okay. <laughs> yeah it's rolling sorry See, so that's a weird thing. That's my weird university. So like, that's why I kind of wish I had more partners to, uh -huh. doing this with me because it's that, like, I can't often trust myself with uh, with, uh, with a lot of things. There was one time we started a podcast where 10 minutes in as a Kalani, I forgot to roll on audio. Oh, shit. And then, uh, the, and then we were just kind of like, oh, my God. <laughs> And so, so yeah. So let me just respond to someone real quick. Oh, yeah. Um, someone my IG says, "Dude, kudos to your mom and her train of thought for your <laughs> origin story." And I'm honest, honestly, I think if it were more acceptable back when she was younger to right. like be a stoner, my mom would be such a pothead. Like, well, it's legal now, right? So. I mean, it's legal now, but she's like 65, and she's like not. It's like. It's like, dude, the marijuana. She's like, you will do marijuana and you will die. <laughs> but I feel like if it were more more socially acceptable, she'd be like such a pothead. Mm. I don't know. I don't. I'm not trying to predict like what could have happened, but she's just like such an, a weird person, and I love her for it. Yeah. As most parents can be weird sometimes. So uh, going back to photography. So yeah. um, so as of right now, so you're just doing this all when when it comes to. Uh, your your um, models are coming in with their own clothes. Yeah. Um, a few and far between are the sponsorships. Yeah. And so I do want to start styling my own stuff, but mm -hmm. um, there's like this weird. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but there's something called um, what's the what's the term called? Um, I forgot what the exact term is, but like people mm -hmm. would go to like stores and then they would buy like mm -hmm. clothes that they would use for a photo shoot and then they would keep the tags on and then they'll literally return it like I, that's like a thing that a lot of like smaller influencers would do right to seem like they have like, a huge closet but what they really do is just buying and returning stuff buying and returning yeah okay. and they'll just return it to like different stores and hopefully they don't get caught mm -hmm. but i mean hopefully i mean i can try doing something like that where i can style some models in that way because that's how a lot of stylists get their, their start if they don't have connections to like brands and stuff mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that's, like, another way that you can source clothing for photo shoots. But, honestly, right. like, I mean, clothes are important. I mean, it is fashion. But for mm -hmm. me, like, I like working with the challenge. Mm -hmm. And I like people coming in with, like, weird shit. Like, I mean, I can kind of give people, like, a general idea of what I want in the mm -hmm. shoot. Like, what kind of vibe. Like, hey, we're going for a city vibe. Mm -hmm. We're going for a cute spot, cute city vibe. Like, okay, do something with it. Yeah, like, yeah. Get to work. <laughs> um, what would you say? So, so, uh, so that was something that um, I'm cluing in right now is that um, you're talking about style. 
So how would you describe your style when it comes to photography? So like, does it come from a specific place? Or what is like your inspiration in that sense? Oh my god, okay, so I made a post about this on Facebook the other mm -hmm. day, and um, my, I had someone tell me that my photography style is like a weird mix between Luna's like more recent stuff from like mm -hmm. the YYXY subgroup up until like Butterfly. Like the dark. So like, is this like, uh, like is this Korean pop or is yeah, K-pop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay, okay. Stan Luna, I'm like such a massive Luna fan. It's mm -hmm. like ridiculous. I got into them like last year, and mm -hmm. like I'm so obsessed. It's like not even funny. Mm -hmm. Um, like with all the crazy like fan theories about their videos and like the like, like the deeper meaning and stuff. Which is actually it, like, um, Blackberry Creative actually confirmed a lot of the theories in Butterfly, and they actually had like a description where they confirmed a lot. Of the so theories. it's like a subreddit for Luna. Yeah, basically. Uh, okay. So it's like a weird, like, if you're into conspiracy theories, check out <laughs> Luna's. No, seriously. It's, okay, okay, okay. It's really satisfying. So right. people are saying that my photography style kind of mixes between Luna's, like, dark, moody, like, um... Is that where, um, uh, our, our friend Amanda, right? Yeah. Is that where... Sh yeah, the eye patch. The eye patch thing? Yeah. I immediately, when I saw that, because I'm from, like, a movie... Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, Tokyo? Yeah. Yeah. I also thought Kill Bill, too. Oh, yeah. And I also thought, yeah. like, wouldn't it be awesome? It's just kind of, like, movies and television where it was, like, historically, like, um, Asian. Not, like, like uh, white or whitewash roles. And then filling those Asian, roles ago Asian in wash. Asian roles. You know? I think there are, there are photographers who have done, or, like, videographers who have done. seen, yeah. There's a couple of them floating around. But, like, basically going back to my photography. Yeah, like, going back to there. Sorry. It's, yeah. a weird, it's a weird mix between Luna's dark themes and mm -hmm. also iZone's, like really hyper feminine floral pretty mm -hmm. like really girly and like it's all about flowers i love mm -hmm. flowers uh i haven't really used a lot of them in my photography recently mm -hmm. because i cannot afford it yeah <laughs> but um just walk into a, a, a michael's yeah but fake flowers though uh, I, I, know, I know i like going to the flower district to source my flowers when, mm -hmm. I'm, when i'm shooting but i just haven't had the opportunity to go there recently it's, yeah if you ever like this is not we're not being sponsored by the flower district but <laughs> if you are looking for really cheap flowers mm -hmm. and you're willing to do the arrangement yourself i mean there are people there who can do the arrangement for you I and mean, that's a little bit pricier yeah, yeah but if you want to buy the individual flowers like it's right. really really cheap mm -hmm. like i was able to get like a like a gigantic bouquet of hydrangeas i usually use like my cauliflowers right. in my photo shoots i can get that for like ten dollars and mm -hmm. literally it's like like a whole like kind of like a bushel of them exactly it's yeah. freaking massive for ten dollars like mm -hmm. you can't get it anywhere cheaper I'll think about that for my next like family reunion yes. or like like big family event. That's where my family got our flowers for like all of our like altars and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we get all from Flower District. Well, Cambodian New Year's is coming up, so hey. maybe you think about that. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's how you would describe your um, uh, style. What are some some inspirations other than the Luna and and um, what was the other one? I zone. I zone. Yeah. Um, do you borrow a lot from other photographers, or is it like TV and film, or is it um, K-pop videos, or, or, or uh, how would you say you get your inspiration? Um. Well, outside of K-pop, I feel like a lot of my work does kind of get influenced by K-pop. Mm -hmm. um, I also am like really into. I mean, I'm also on Instagram a lot for right. work. Um, I check out a lot of other photographers. I really like... Um, well, the ones... Uh, there's a lot of photographers I do like, and I can shout them out. But in terms of, like, the ones that are actually, like, really influencing mm -hmm. me, I feel like Karen Rosalie is, like, a really amazing mm -hmm. photographer. I worked with her as her assistant for a little while last year when I was starting off. Right. Um, her, her work is, like... Um, in a similar vein to mine. Um, Mingle Street, I love their, like, moody, desaturated kind of, like, photos. Like, that mm -hmm. influences the way that I edit my photos. Right. Um, Julia Trotty, who is... I think she's from Australia or New Zealand. Mm -hmm. She's a really amazing, like, um, portrait photographer and fashion photographer as well. She does, like, really good, like, movement in her photos. And her photos mm -hmm. are really girly. And that also influences me. I literally watch all her videos. Mm -hmm. And so is Jessica Cabasi on mm -hmm. YouTube. Um, I think she's somewhere in like the north i'm not sure where though but mm -hmm. she's um also another fashion photographer and i really respect her work too i also um i wanted to ask you something specifically mm -hmm. from your facebook uh page oh um, god <laughs> um, which which one is it there was one <laughs> with a butterfly bench and i thought yeah. I, and um oh yeah from the well, luna shoot right yeah, yeah. From the, so is that luna yeah that was part of my luna project when i was oh, shooting okay. butterfly yeah i thought 
because I was coming from like a film, like I said, from a film thing. I, I thought, oh, is this like a French Nouveau thing where like, you know, it's like pastel kind of grainy, mm -hmm. um, like film stock and like, you know, shot, well, shot in like south of France almost. No, um, well, some of them were shot in France, like for... Um, the one so, you did at um, Moana Re Park? Is that the All one? of them were actually shot... All I realized that I almost all the shots I did right. from the project were all stills taken from LA as well. Because um, mm -hmm. you guys don't okay. So backstory into Luna's like uh, cinematography. Mm -hmm. um, all their almost all their music videos are shot by this agency called Digipedi, mm -hmm. and um, the CEO of Digipedi basically did like all of their recent stuff and so right. there's a very similar like style like a through line to all, all yeah what doing. at the very yeah. least from like from odd eye circle up until mm -hmm. butterfly um so the, the that butterfly scene was actually taken mm -hmm. in um east la at mariachi court yeah, yeah i yeah. didn't realize that i thought like and I, then you were like driving around and you're like oh my god i found this someone come here right now so i could take some photos exactly that was yeah. that's that the was one great thing yeah. about my side job because i work for doordash um mm -hmm. as a driver yeah um you literally drive around la and you get it's like um it's like location scouting but you also get paid for it it's yeah awesome. <laughs> and so um you talked about music so mm -hmm. what sort of like do you have music playing in your mind or or like it while you're taking photos like what is your soundtrack to, uh, to what you're doing um what gives you that energy oh gosh um so when i'm editing photos i mm -hmm. like listening to lo-fi lo-fi hip-hop <laughs> yeah. lo beats to listen to lost yeah. Night. like shout out they're such an yeah. og i used to listen to reflective vibes on tumblr there was right. like a whole tumblr with like very similar ish music and mm -hmm. i like their music more than lo-fi but because it, the the owner kind of like stopped posting like there mm -hmm. hasn't been new stuff but i like listening to like chill like new dobbies as kind of like stuff when i'm editing photos mm -hmm. um but when I'm shooting, it really just depends on the type of shoot. Like, I mean, I'll go anywhere between, like, K-pop to, like, EDM. Right. Um, but those are, like, my two mains. And then, um, yeah, like, that's mostly, like, what is playing in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, K-pop trash when I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. When I'm needing, like, high energy. But, like, when I'm just down there, like, just working and, like, I need to grind, it's, like... Uh, mm -hmm. lo-fi lo-fi yeah um, also if you add you can go to rainycafe.com rainy cafe and you can they, they have like a little thing where you can turn you can toggle on like a, a rain simulator and a cafe simulator where it'll just create like, like white ambient noise, noise. Oh, yeah okay. like ca cafe ambient noise and like rainy noise so i will play that on top of the lo-fi and it's such a vibe like oh my that's god that's a that's the thing i love it when it rains and yeah. it's weird because i moved from one part of my house that had a very thin roof and yeah. you could hear every little drop. Oh, that's amazing. And, but I went to another room and all you hear is like the window getting hit and I, I've been sleeping much more better recently. Because Wait, which one do you like more? Do you like the, do you like the, it on the roof or do you like it on the window? I like it on a roof and if I were preferred and had a hammock in my backyard, have like a tin roof and hearing mm. that too. It so. sucks. It's like we we romanticize the rain so much because and we, we just don't get a lot of it. <laughs> we don't, and like everyone else is listening to this who's from like the northwest. Like, oh my god, what's wrong with these? Yeah, people? what's wrong? Yeah, what's wrong with people from California? <laughs> why, like, why are you getting off on rain? Like, stop. <laughs> and uh, well, we, we do really need it actually. Exactly. Anyways, um, so as a creative uh, individual, what do you do if you have a block? And I don't know if writer's block and, like, photography block is, like, the same thing or a different thing. Like, what can you do to get over that hump of, like, I just don't want to do this right now? I recently, I mean, is it more of a work ethic thing? Are you saying, like, well, I just don't want to do it because I just don't want to do it and I don't have the work ethic? Or is it just, like, I just don't have inspiration? It's, like, on an inspiration level. Like, kind of like how writer's block have mm. writer's block. Yeah. And, and, and I want... Is there, have you ever felt that when you're doing photography? And then if so, like, what are some ways for you to tell the audience, like, you know, this is how I deal with it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, well, as a photographer, it's a very visual, obviously it's a very visual medium. Right. Uh, it's actually kind of easy for me to get out of like inspiration block because there's so, we're bombarded with so much visual information, like mm -hmm. every single day. Like mm -hmm. I, I remember um, in my art history class, we were talking about how, the modern human has seen more images or has bombarded with more images in one day of their life mm -hmm. than people who have lived in the 18th century their entire lives. Right. Imagine, like, that. Like, that's how much we are bombarded with, like, visual, mm -hmm. like, just content in general. And for me, like, 
I'm able to find inspiration anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. But when I'm feeling like creator's block, I kind of just go on Pinterest. And, and I just kind of check it out? Yeah, I go on Pinterest. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm pinning stuff. Like, that's, like, the key to success in photography, I feel, mm-hmm. is a very well-curated Pinterest board. Because mm-hmm. that's literally where your brain sits. And that's how you get a lot of inspiration from. Mm-hmm. And I don't subscribe to the fact that, like, it's, like, creatives need to be constantly original mm-hmm. we kind of are just people who are frankensteining like other inspiration together to create something that's uniquely ours right and so that's how i work i pin stuff on pinterest mm-hmm. i go on instagram and i save stuff into collections mm-hmm. um i go on youtube to look at videos um it could be like music videos it could be um like just editing tutorials mm-hmm. um just I just try to consume as much content as I possibly can. And then mm-hmm. somewhere down the road, that's like that's where I get the idea for whatever direction I want my work to go down. Okay. But it's also really good, too, to surround yourself with creatives. Um, I to got, see, like, what they're working on and, like, h- how they're going about their process? It's not so much as, like, looking at their work, but it's more just, like, I feel like the, the energy of being around creatives kind of mm-hmm. creates, gets all the juice running in your head, and it allows you to kind of... It's like everybody gets a bump. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really nice because I love being surrounded by creatives because I feed off of that energy very well. Mm-hmm. And it really helps, especially if you're in a rut. You know, right. like it's not, you can't isolate yourself. Yeah. Um, is there anything like you're working on or something that like you want to challenge yourself to do more of? Like, is there some, anything in the pipeline, some like behind the scenes thing that you want to give to the audience? Oh my god, I need more money. <laughs> That's the main thing I'm working yeah, towards. Just yeah. pay me, please. Pay. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I'm serious now. Um, projects I'm working on. Um, I'm in this stage right now where I'm doing my best to challenge myself in as many different manners mm-hmm. as I can. Um, I've been doing a couple of um, like shooting marathons. Like, I mean, you've probably seen me suffer through a couple of them in January yeah. and February right. where I literally just go through a week and just shoot. Mm-hmm. But the, it's fun and also the most draining experience that you can ever go through because right. you're constantly working mm-hmm. um and balancing like, everything else but the great thing is that i'm with every collab sheet that i'm doing during those marathons i'm mm-hmm. constantly telling people okay give me um, a concept give me a time and a place and i'll work around it and it's mm-hmm. like little mini challenges for me to get my juices flowing and it keeps me on my toes because mm-hmm. when i'm working with paid clients it's like i am much more uninclined to try out new things and mm-hmm. experiment because I need to deliver the best content I can for them and mm-hmm. I don't really think it's my place to like experiment with stuff like I'll, I'll try something new here and there right, right, right. but for the most part like the shoots are very like cut and dry like this is why catered towards what the person wants right? yeah they know yeah. what they're gonna get from me because mm-hmm. that's like paid work you know yeah. but when it comes to like, my collab shoots I'm just like okay like, let's let's try some completely different angles let's try completely different editing styles like just do whatever you want um, you know, have fun. Oh, uh, uh, in terms of um, collabs and uh, and and people coming to you about different photo shoots, um, what what do you prefer? Do you prefer somebody coming in with say like simple word concepts like I want day, uh, this type of emotion, and then this? Do you prefer that versus I have this well written out? I have some um, some drawings that I had concepts, and I have a specific location. Which do you prefer? Oh my god, give it to me. Give it all to me. Like, like all the information? No, no, not all the information, but just like challenge me. Like if mm-hmm. you have a quote and you want me to interpret that with you somehow, like mm-hmm. bring it. Let's try it. But I mean, um, if you are looking for a specific idea, I feel like the main, the standard industry standard for mm-hmm. when you are working with a client is they, they should send you something called a mood board or an inspiration board. Right. Which is basically they're like all the images that they kind of like gravity tours that they want to incorporate into their their shoot so let's mm-hmm. say like they'll have a slide that has like all the outfits that they kind of want to choose and then they have another slide that's for the location mm-hmm. where what kind of vibe they want like what kind of location they want me to select mm-hmm. and then they can have like a posing like slide where they take post pictures of like all the poses they want for their shoots and that when you're working professionally if it's a paid shoot and you have like a specific like goal in mind for the kind mm-hmm. of images that you want that is like by far the most important thing. Like you cannot be vague when you're working. Yeah. If you're, if I'm doing like a page shoot with a client, like I need mood boards. I need you to be very clear and specific mm-hmm. with what you want because you're paying money for this. And if I need to deliver 
like and you don't you want them for on their end to kind of like waste the money on like of oh i just only have the, these ideas so it's like no give me as much information so yeah. i can do this as the most efficient way as possible exactly i mean it, it doesn't i mean i work with clients who was, weren't too sure about where they wanted to go with the shoot they just wanted pictures mm -hmm. and then that's when we work together on it but it's oh, like okay. Like, it's not so much like you need to come with me to uh, with a mood board. It's like, okay, great. If you could, that would really help a brother out. Right. But if you want to work with me on it... Oh, why is my live video ending? Um, I think it went on too long. Oh, did it, did it reach your limit? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's like a one-hour live video. Let me try oh, okay. It. okay. Try it again. Okay, I'm live again. Oh, you're live again? <laughs> yeah. I'm back. Hello. Um, Where was I? Yeah, so in terms of mood boards... um. Mm -hmm. I could work with a client to build a mood board and right. we can select images. If they give me like an uh, inspiration and an idea, mm -hmm. um, I could work with it and create a mood board for them or we mm -hmm. can go back and forth. But at the end of the day, before the shoot, I would like to have a mood board with ideas of what you want. And it also, it's like, it mainly is for like new clients who don't really know what they want. Mm -hmm. But if you get more comfortable with me and we kind of like feed off each other and we know what's going on, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, we don't really need one now. It's just like, if you do have inspo, just like send me whatever. Right. But... It's like, once I get to know you, I know what your aesthetics are. It's like, okay, I can work with that. And people okay. also come to me because they know I have a specific style and they like that style. And that's a good thing about photography is like you have everything kind of laid bare and like say, hey, this is the work I've done. Yeah. Do you want to do like, I could challenge you and say, oh, let's do something different. Like, let's do like black and white, primarily, primarily like sort of series of photos. Or if I want to do something where like maybe video, I don't know if that's part of yeah. your thing. But um, like, y you know, it's it's like, oh, this is my portfolio and this is what I can do. Yeah. And and they could say, I like that style. I want to work with this artist. Yeah, I mean, for, for the most part, I feel like clients, they, they come in knowing that, like, you'll have this style, but it's, like, tailored mm -hmm. to what they need. It's yeah. not they're going a completely different direction. Like, I can't mm -hmm. do, like, Jessica Cabasi style of photos. You know, you give me that, it's like, okay, you know, like, you might want to hit mm -hmm. her up for those photos. Yeah. But, I mean, for the most part, like, I'll work with the client with however it is they want, but it's like, they mm -hmm. come in knowing that they ha I have a specific style yeah. and they like it and they might replicate it. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, like, the mood board really helps. Have you any had any specific stories? And I don't know if you want to put anybody on the spot, but any specific photographer stories? Anything kind of interesting happen while you're doing this for, like, about four to three years? Oh, okay, um... Well, I mean, I, I don't want to put anyone on blast because, well, I, not that I have stories to put people on blast for because all the people... That yeah, it doesn't have good. to be negative. No. It could be, yeah, um, it could be very positive. Yeah. Um, my friend Jennifer yeah. from X Jung, mm -hmm. um, I work with her a lot. I mean, she's seen her. She's a cool Yeah, player. yeah. <laughs> we have this joke where she's like, you make your models go do the craziest shit ever. I've seen that post. Yeah. I've I love that. it though. I love challenging my models. And it's like mm -hmm. part of the fun of like a collab photo shoot where it's mm -hmm. just like, we're just having fun and we're just doing some crazy shit. Like I've had her climb up shit and like pose and like weird, like in the middle of the street and like, or like in broad daylight and like. I don't know. Like I, it, I just it, in a in a in a bare field where the only thing there is a fountain that goes down a hill. Oh yeah, no, that's actually in Monterey Park. Um, yeah, the Monterey Park. Kiana fountain. was on my. <laughs> she was on my other. Um, she was in the other podcast or the um, live live stream. But um, she and I were at the fountains over in Monterey Park, mm -hmm. and um, that was interesting because the water was freezing cold, and it was also a cold. I can day, imagine we were... because I think that week we we're coming off of a rainstorm, yeah. and it was still like a winter situation. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, y'all are like wearing like anything for summer the shot. clothes. Yeah. yeah, anything for anything the shot. Anything for the shot. And it's like we were dying. I mean, she was used to it because she's she was a swimmer. But it's like literally, there's like this huge sign that was like no waiting in the pool. And it's like no, fuck it. Let's just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both of you are just going in. <laughs> yeah. My initial view was I saw the video of her walking into the yeah. in, in, into the fountain, yeah. and then I was just like, wow, Vincent's really putting other people on like. In, in the way just for a shot uh -huh. and then I was just like oh no Vincent is also in that water too <laughs> yeah I mean if I'm making my models do it it's like if I have to get in like to do weird crazy shit then mm -hmm. I'll go into like I mean for like uh, with like consideration for you know health and safety and all that I mean mm -hmm. we walk a very thin line but I mean we do try to walk it on like the safe side mm -hmm. but I mean like I'm very conscious of my model safety as well but it's yeah. just like we do like for most photographers I feel like they're well, at least from what my friends and clients have told mm -hmm. me, it's like the photographers they work with, it's more of just like, hey, like, do your thing and I'll shoot. But I'm like, I'm very 
hands on with my models. Like, I mm-hmm. tell them, hey, like, let's try moving in this direction. Can you move your hand here? Let's do this. Like, here's the photo that I just took right now. Let's, can you move your arm a little bit differently? Let's try, you know, like, I, I, direct, I do a lot of directing with my models. Yeah. Yeah, um, I imagine because you're pl- playing those two roles because in, on a filmmaking standpoint, you also have, you have a cinematographer that has a specific style and you have a director that has a s- specific style. Yeah. While you're a photographer, you're doing both hats exactly. where, where you're like, this is what you're doing and this is what I w- want to get and these are the these these are the um, um, things that we're gonna have to do to get to that point yeah. exactly I feel like the biggest problem in photography I mean aside the fact of like you know sexual assault and all that mm-hmm. but I feel like from what my friends have told me who are models and have worked with a lot of photographers they told me like the biggest draw to working with me is because I'm very like like I give a lot of feedback and mm-hmm. I thought that was just normal. I thought that's just what you're supposed to do because you have an idea here mm-hmm. and you want to get it onto the camera. You can't just expect your model to like read your mind and know what to yeah. do. Like you need to communicate. It's, it's like, a collaborative. It's a dance. That's the thing. Like, yeah. I, I, I consider it almost like a dance. Like mm-hmm. you're, you, there's, you guys both feed off of each other. Mm-hmm. And so, um, we're, we're winding down a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, trying to keep this within an hour. You're also going to be doing, you're going back to work oh, probably yeah. immediately after this. Oh, yeah. But um, is there anything um, um, like advice like, or? like passion projects oh. that you want to work on in the future? Um, like in terms of your photography and stuff like that. And if you want to come back again, we could definitely yeah. talk about more personal stuff too. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially when Let's it comes get real personal. To, yeah, and then especially when it comes to being Asian and also gay in the yeah. gay community. So uh, we, we haven't touched that yet. But um, any passion projects that you want to work on? Uh, I think I remember at one point we talked about like having a bo- body positive series of photos for men yeah. you know, at one point. But is there anything that you want to do 100% in your lifetime? I haven't really, like, not specific projects because I'm still working on some right now, like the mm-hmm. K-pop and, like, the traditional clothing and queer mm-hmm. portraits, right. body positive. Um, my biggest goal right now is to open up my own studio mm-hmm. in downtown LA, and right. I don't know if it's, like, within the next year or within the next five years. I just don't know, but I know that I will open it, mm-hmm. and I do want it to be a collaborative space for mm-hmm. other creatives to be, to work in. Mm-hmm. Um It'll be in my studio, and then it'll be like almost like a co-working space. Um, that'd be really dope. That's like my passion project. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, something before we leave out on, we're going to leave out on a very inspirational or positive note. Yeah. What would you tell your younger version of yourself? Oh. Um, young- were you having such a, a storied life yeah. from, from, from high school, college to now, what would you tell yourself as, as a younger version? Well, I don't know, like, in my head right now, like, I feel like a lot of my problems would not be here right now if I had better money management, mm-hmm. like, skills, and like, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not like a financial advisor or anything, but like, I started my financial journey, like, in January, and I, I am chronicling that in my blog, mm-hmm. but um, I would tell my younger self to have better financial literacy and mm-hmm. have more discipline when it comes to, comes to finances and not allowing my my past growing up in poverty to affect to, the way that I show off and mm-hmm. like the way that I feel like I need to compensate for it yeah. by spending a lot of money on like clothes and food and like all these yeah. like external factors yeah. and just learning how to save and you know. Mm-hmm. So you don't want the fact that you grew up in like that immigrant household and like living in that kind of below like middle income situation dictate how you live your gosh life. i wish yeah. we were below middle income <laughs> but no well it's... we do live in california and trying to be creatives oh, right yeah. now too so that's oh, yeah. another sort of stress that we both have yeah so uh, yeah definitely it's more just like a lot of the problems i did stem in like my 20s have been because of money and like not mm-hmm. having good financial discipline mm-hmm. um i feel like i would want to sit down with my younger self and i feel like Younger me would not have listened anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm or at very, least you could have tried, right? I mean, yeah. I, like, it's versus, it's like, mm-hmm. future you being like, hey, bitch, you need to get your shit together and yeah. stop spending money on clothes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, um, is there any way for people to contact you or uh, anywhere that you want people to hit you up on or follow you on social? Do oh. you want to uh, um, tell them that right now? Yeah, so basically you, can guys, you guys can find me mainly on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I am Cytherial, C-Y-T-H-E-R-I-A-L. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we could talk more in the next podcast about yeah. like why I came up with that name. Yeah. But um, yeah, you guys can find me there. Um, all my links are on the on the Instagram, like any mm -hmm. good like entrepreneur, right? Yeah. <laughs> all my you do that hustle man especially yeah. as a creative <laughs> no but everything's on my instagram mm -hmm. um all the ways you can contact me um mm -hmm. please give me a like and follow whatever follow my little journey on instagram yeah and uh you'll get a lot of good advice when it comes to organization and financial management and boot, like bullet journaling god let's, oh, like, let's do a bullet journaling podcast. do a bull bullet journaling we yeah. should get like another per like i wonder if there's any experts in that too I mean, we have a couple of people in ACN who yeah. do like bullet journaling. Like, we can do like a, a talk about that. That'd be pretty. Dope. That'd be really interesting. All right, so that's gonna be our episode. We're winding down here. So, if you are interested in this podcast, please like, subscribe, and uh, ring that bell for any more notifications. And uh, if you wanna uh, want me to interview more people that you're interested in, just uh, put it in the comments, and hopefully, I guess somehow I would contact them. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much for having me today. All right, cool. Thank you, Vincent, for coming over, and I hope you enjoy the, the face wash. Yes. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye. Take care.